Hello, good evening and welcome to our special edition of PM Express. Tonight, I apologize for coming to you late. Now, the National Council of the New Patriotic Party has reaffirmed its backing for the petition filed by Nane Kufuado, Mohamedou Baumia, and Jacob Echevilamte at the Supreme Court, which is challenging the validity of the results of the 2012 presidential elections as declared by the chairman of the Electoral Commission. The National Democratic Congress uh, has also filed a motion at the Supreme Court to join in the petition uh, brought against President John Mahama as well as the Electoral Commission. The NDC says a decision was taken because the president was elected on its ticket, hence the need for the party to express interest in the proceedings in court. You may also know that at Monday's meeting, uh, at a meeting on Monday, the MPP's National Council, which is the highest decision-making body of the party other than the National Delegate Conference, also decided and directed all party members to boycott the planned January uh, 7th inauguration of President John Mahama and uh, his Vice President, Kwesi Emisa Arthur. Now, tonight we'll explore the legal issues, that what appears to be a legal wrangle as we go into the new year. What relevance are these legal issues? Uh, going to court, to the Supreme Court, and then the NDC also an announcing that it will attach itself to the defense. My guest tonight uh, is Sam Okujeto, who is a president of the Ghana Bar Association. Uh, it's an honor to have you here, sir. It's a pleasure. Welcome to PM Express. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Now, in my intro, you heard mm -hmm. me talk about the decision of the MPP to go to court. Mm -hmm. And then the NDC also announces that, no, hold on, we want to attach ourselves to the defense because the, the, the president was named as respondent, but not the party. What do you make of all these legal developments? Well, I think it's uh, very interesting because it's uh, first of its kind uh, in our country that uh, a presidential election is being challenged in court. So I know people have been making allegations that there were previous cases filed, but actually they were not petitions. Mm -hmm. This is the first time that a petition is being presented to challenge a presidential election. And I think it's a good development uh, for the country because you know, when the laws are made, uh, as we have constitution, unless it is tested, we never know what the consequences will be. And it's also good for the citizen to appreciate that where there is a grievance, there is a process laid down under our laws for resolving them. Because otherwise, you know, people are tempted to take the law into their own hands. And then we descend into the jungle. Uh, Ghana has, uh, you know, in the Committee of Nations, been respected so much for our democratic ideals, for the, well, sometimes we use the word peace-loving. Yeah, but we are tolerant people um, because quite unlike what happened in other countries when people generate into one tribe against another and they fight and the rest of them, it's something which is rare in, in our country because we have learned to live together in committee, uh, we intermarry, we, we, we live at peace with one another and it is good. And therefore, I am happy that a matter of this nature is being tested in the court and not anywhere else. You talk about being tested yes. in the court. Yes. So, I mean, the, the basis of our law in yes. Ghana is the yes. Constitution of the Republic. Absolutely. What exactly does the Constitution say, I mean, which, which gave the MPP the impetus to go to court in the first place? Well, if you look at the 1992 Constitution, 1964, uh, Article 64 in particular, lays down to say that where there is uh, an election, a petition can be presented to the Supreme Court. So in fact, uh, what has even happened in this case, which I think is beautiful, was that the, the judiciary itself had anticipated problems arising. And indeed, we've had uh, actions brought in the court before. Most of them were, of course, related to uh, parliamentary elections and not presidential uh, to challenge presidential election. The only one that ever came close to presidential 
was rather the one brought by Metilnonu, which was not actually a petition, but was saying that the Electoral Commission uh, should have gazetted the results of the election showing. So that was the only matter that ever came before the Supreme Court. So the Constitution, the, the Supreme Court, oh no, the judiciary, actually published a book. In fact, I brought a copy, a copy mm. with me here. And uh, talks about manual on election adjudication in Ghana. And they actually made a second edition in uh, July this year. And in this, they have laid down the explain the whole process procedure and the various laws that govern election showing that if there is a dispute this is the process by which it should be laid down so the matter has been quite clearly worked out by the court itself the judiciary itself you you admire the legal system because you you are a very successful lawyer in, I, spent in your, for, I spent 49 years in it yes I mean yeah. undeniably you yeah. are you are one of the best brain <laughs> legal brains we have now typically if mm -hmm. a citizen of the Republic goes to the Supreme Court yeah. I mean what kinds or types of actions uh, are they able to take to the Supreme Court and is this MPP's case one of them Yes, but you said MPP case. Let me just make a correction. The, co the Constitution talks about a Ghanaian. It didn't really talk about political party. It talks about a Ghanaian. That you, first of all, you must be a citizen of Ghana. Mm. So it has to be a citizen of Ghana that can present the petition before the court. And I think in this particular instance, it is three citizens of Ghana that mm. brought the action. It was not the MPP. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, the question I'm asking is that, so typically, when a citizen has a case yes. to take to the Supreme Court, yes. what types of actions can they take there? Well, in this particular instance, there again, within that law, they actually have elaborated all the various processes that they can be taken. First of all, that it must come by way of a petition. Mm. And that's why when people are talking about action, action, we have to caution it and say this is not action that we normally begin in a court by a writ of some. But what's the difference, really? Yeah, an a action and a petition. Oh, two big differences. You see, if you and I have a dispute, uh, we are claiming something, it could be a land, it could be money you owe me, mm -hmm. whatever it is, I would have issued a writ in the court to be served on you. Mm -hmm. And then you, I become the plaintiff mm -hmm. and you become the defender. Mm -hmm. In the case of a petition, what it is saying is that I am a citizen of Ghana. Something had happened in the legal process which I do not think was the right thing to be done. And therefore, I'm making a petition to the court to look into it. In that case, I am not a plaintiff. I am the petitioner. Mm -hmm. And then the law also says I can join whoever I think will be a person who will be affected by the order that the court would make. So the process will be served on that person. Or somebody who thinks that his interest also is affected by it may come and join. Mm -hmm. Or the court itself may give an order that somebody else. So oftentimes we do applications and then they may say join the attorney general so that he can come and argue. Uh, the, what the legal help the courts to arrive at the legal mm -hmm. processes. So there's a clear distinction between mm -hmm. a petition and so in electoral matters, it always goes by way a of petition. a petition. I see. And m mind you, the the person who is making the petition actually need not be even a candidate. In this particular instance, the presidential one. If it's a parliamentary, yes, that normally that's what it should have been. Because what the person is saying that something has gone wrong the electoral process and therefore I am a citizen of Ghana I'll be affected because I'm a citizen of Ghana by the process of what is going to happen in the court and therefore I'm asking the court to look into it so, so that's a big difference between right so a petition and an action yeah. um, you can't say that one makes a stronger case than the other really when it comes to going to the Supreme not Court because the question is, is the rules that have been made mm. Uh, the, the law that has been made says that you should come by way of a petition. And that's why you petition the court. And then you also find out that in the case of a petition, what you do is that you state what the issue is, which you think or the infringement of the law is that you want the court to look at. And then you state the reasons for it. You state what has transpired. You also state the laws 
that you think are affected by virtue of that decision and even the legal authorities if there are any which you think will support that application and then those are the matters that will come before the court and then they will ask you to swear to an affidavit to verify those matters right so let me go to the substance the detail yeah. of the summary of the petition okay. that was filed by uh, Nanako Fuado Mama Dubaumia and Jacob Ejabilamte. Right. Now, uh, I'll read, just read a portion, okay. uh, portions, portions of it. It says that uh, in the matter of petition challenging the validity of the election of John Dramani Mahama as President of the Republic, yeah. pursuant to presidential elections held on 7th and 8th December, and then it quotes the article, and then it named uh, the three who are petitioning, yeah. and then it names John Dramani Mahama and the Electoral Commission. Yeah. What I want to find out is that this summary of detail yeah. was put before the public Correct. after it was filed That's right. by the MPP as a political party. Okay. So a press conference was held yeah. and then they put this in the public domain to sure. say we have done A, B, C and D and the details were out. Yes. I need to find out whether this does not jeopardize the case before the Supreme Court in any way, for example, if they're seen to be um, maybe in contempt. Oh, no, 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 no. I think let's, let's, let's look at that quite clearly in a different light altogether. Contempt will mean if we sit down here to try and be debating the matter which the court is supposed but to decide. But in putting this in the public, it, 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 it exposed it to public no, debate no, it is an information. before the hearing. No, no, it's an information because... If the writ was filed in the court, you, as press, mm. as, as, as an institution authorized by law to inform the public, will still have to go, you, have go, you, have, you could have gone to the registry yourself mm. and say you want to know, have a copy of the petition that was filed because you want the public to know. Because the election was held. Someone says he, he disagrees with the results of the election. He had come to court. Children, the public has a right to know what is transpiring in the court. They have a right to know. Mm. If you go to sit down and say the merit or the demerits of the matter, you are in contempt. In fact, I heard some people already going when I say somebody had not done the thing rightly and so on. I say you have no. So business. if I asked you right yeah, now yeah. about the merits or demerits, you will you you, you, ca you cannot discuss this. No, right? you and I, in fact, will be in contempt. Will be cited for, uh, contempt. for contempt. Absolutely. And if it does happen which I'm sure I'm not suggesting yeah. that there are members of the MPP or NDC who, who appear to be, uh, uh, you know, threading the, the path of contempt. Yeah. But if that happens, how bad will that affect the case the MPP is, is, has put before the Supreme Court? Well, the concept of contempt is not a question whether it's bad to affect or not. It is just to appreciate that that is the institution charged by law with the responsibility to decide on legal issues and not the media and not us as citizens of Ghana. And I think that is a factor which I believe that oftentimes is missed by Ghanaians because I've seen people on radio and television and then they said uh, sometimes even some, if some of my own colleagues, lawyers, are guilty of that as well because some of them will come from court and then they call the press and they say the judge was wrong and this and that and I say you have no business doing that. That is the responsibility of the judge. They decide the case. If you have an argument, present it at the court mm. and nowhere else. That's the forum where you should raise your legal argument and let the courts make the pronouncement. When they finish, you can go ahead and attack them as much as you like. Mm. You, are, you are at liberty to do that. The MPP has said it has a watertight case. I mean, this has been, this has been part of their rhetoric all along since the they contested the well the you, just have make, you can you can look at it from another angle and ask yourself that if they don't have a good case where did they go so the person who has gone to court with this petition or even with his case who say that i have got a good case mm. because the question will be that if you don't have a good case where did you go so let's not let that be an issue to uh, to say that that affects the judgment of the judges of the Supreme Court. They are not persuaded but one do, way or the other. do you have an expectation yeah. of which way this is going to go? I'm sure no. that when you think as a lawyer, well-accomplished lawyer, you might be tossing in your head the possibility of the outcomes. But in, in, in every sit legal situation, every case that goes to court, there is always a the, win possi and a loss. the possibility that you might win. There's also a possibility that you must, we might lose the case.
those two are always there. Are you able to weigh uh, to one side whether you feel that the MPP has a better case to win or well, can, a less case to win? Well, let to me lose. tell you that I have gone to that Supreme Court sometimes so assured of myself. And, and you lost? And, yeah, and I lost. Yeah. Many instances I've been there and I won. But because I was also sure on the legal presentation that I have made. But I have also been there before I lost. In fact, I even remember that I went there and I lost the first round. And I made a, an application for a review. And some of the judges who took the decision against me before changed their mind, and I won. Mm. So it's, it's not mathematics. Law is not mathematics. So this is not going to be an easy uh, case in court. It, it is not. It can drag. Uh, well, right? No, no, no. That's another confusion again I'm hearing among mm. people about drag, drag, drag. The courts themselves in this book have taken a decision to say that a lecture master uh, matters that can create tension in the country must be and expired. therefore it must be done as expeditiously as possible. as possible so if anybody is thinking in terms of dragging i can assure that person that that won't they, happen that they've missed the boat it is mm. not likely to happen now let's look at the technicalities of the mpp deciding to name the president the sitting president as a, as a respondent in a case in court is this does this not go against the immunity that the president enjoys under the constitution well, this is a, a whole issue. The president has not been sued. The president of Ghana has not been sued in any action in the court. What has happened is that a petition has been presented at the court. And in that petition, you will see that John Dramani Mahama was named. No one at that instant mentioned his name as president. Mm. Because he's an individual who stood for the election as John Dramani Mahama. He didn't stand for election as president of Ghana. He stood for election as a citizen of Ghana who was qualified to stand for election and stood election as John. But by Ramani the time Mahama. he was standing, that he, is he here was a sitting there. president. That one is neither here nor there. He is an individual who was qualified to stand for election and he stood for election. And therefore, you cannot present a petition to challenge his election without uh, naming him as a person to be affected by the decision that you took. Otherwise, you mean the decision should be taken without him. Some NDC members of the NDC communications team have argued that when the president subjects himself to the legal processes of one, appearing in court and perhaps being sworn in, taking oath, the normal things that happen in court, his duties as president will suffer. Do you agree? It completely. They, they again, they misunderstand the matter because even in these rules, it indicates quite clearly, the constitution says that if the court takes a decision to annul the election, that does not affect the thing that he has done because the constitution has presumed that that possibility is there. Mm. That he could have been sworn in as president, he would have been acting as president, the court would have heard that his election was invalid, mm. in which case he would cease to be president. So if that is the case, I don't know what the argument is all about. Right. So, so it means that, I mean, the president, as he is a president, he doesn't lose much time or the, the business of governance does not stall merely because he's being, you know, being dragged that kind is of not to the Supreme Court. The Constitution did not say so. The Constitution was quite clear. It says that the decision of the Supreme Court to annul the results of an election should not affect the actions that the person elected has taken. The presumption is that once the Electoral Commission, which is the only authority authorized by law mm -hmm. to declare a person elected, declares him elected, he is president until such time that the court says it is he's not the elected, it was not valid. Mm. That's what it is all about. Mm. So if we look at the the fact that the MPP, well the three citizens who took the case, who are the and MPP presidential candidate and his vice presidential candidate and the chairman of the MPP who are citizens like you've rightly pointed mm -hmm. decided to name John Dramani Mahama and the Electoral Commission without attaching the NDC to it. Um, wherein stands the case that the NDC now has filed to, has petitioned the Supreme Court to, to join the, 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 to join the respondents? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't, I don't see the basis for it. 
I don't see the basis for it because the MPP did not go to court because the MPP is not a citizen of Ghana. The MPP is a legal entity. Where the I law does not allow the political law, parties party, to exactly. take such actions. Yeah, you are supposed to go to the court. I mean, politic, political party can go to court, but in the election, question of election. Election petitions? Petitions. No. The citizens. I, that I think this, that's what it says. So you think the NDC is shooting itself in the foot with I, this petition to well, join? Actually, I don't know if they, somebody else thinks that is interested. I don't see why the person cannot go to the court to go and join it. But I don't believe that the, uh, the right approach is the political party going to the court because the MPP did not go to court. What do you think the NDC should have done if it feels that um, it needed to bring um, maybe some more political representation to, no, that to, can, to there the There can court. always be an interested party. An interested party could have gone to the court, make an application to the court to be joined. And it's the responsibility of the Supreme Court to decide whether that, that is a valid process or not to help in unraveling the law. Well, we, we're here. Um, I'm here. My name is Stephen Enti with Sam Okujetu, a senior lawyer, former member of the Ghana Bar Association. And we're, we're exploring the legal issues that are before us now. Uh, three citizens who belong to the New Patriotic Party have filed a petition at the Supreme Court. And the NDC, a political party, is, has also filed an application to join as respondents. We'll take a short break and when we return, we'll explore some more of these legal issues. I'm here with Sam Okujeto, who is a former uh, president of the Bar Association. And so we're discussing the substantive case yeah. there. And, well, the citizens, I, I want to be cautious so I don't say the <laughs> MPP because you just educated me to understand that three citizens are going to court to challenge the election results. In the event that the Supreme Court rules that the evidence that these citizens are bringing before the court are valid, compelling enough. Is there a likelihood that the election results could be annulled? And if so, what happens to the inauguration of the president on January 7? Well, we are here talking about time factor. It's always a question of time. Uh, some of you may remember that uh, George Bush, George W. Bush, the junior, when the, he, sele he was elected, uh, there was a controversy about the votes in Florida. And that matter went to the U.S. Supreme Court. The good thing in the U.S. Supreme Court is that that declaration was made before the inauguration. Mm. Except for there was no, no time, problem. Yeah, no, okay. There was no time lapse. I think the problem that we have in Ghana is the, the constitution which we had made which did not provide for time mm. because you are holding your elections in December and then your term begins on the 7th of uh, January. Mm. So very little time actually at, is allowed. And if you remember, we did have a second run, run of before. Yeah. And that almost created a problem for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are matters maybe in the next review of the Constitution we need to look at critically mm -hmm. and see whether we could not provide an abundant time so that it has to be a challenge. That challenge could have been determined by the court before the date of the inauguration. Mm -hmm. But as I said, the Constitution itself had thought about that kind of situation arising, that is why I was quoting to you to say that Section 64 mm. of the Constitution says quite clearly that the validity of the decision of the President may be challenged only by a citizen of Ghana, only by a citizen of Ghana, who may present a petition for the purpose of the Supreme Court within 21 days after the declaration of the results of the election, in respect of which the petition is presented. But then subsection 2 of that is very informative because it says that a declaration by the Supreme Court that the election of the president is not valid shall not be without prejudice. No, shall be without prejudice to anything done by the president before the declaration. That's strong. Done by the president mm. before the declaration. So when you look at it from that angle, then you can appreciate that.
There is nothing preventing John Dramani Mahama from being sworn in on the 7th of January as president. There's nothing here if we say that he cannot be sworn in. So he can be sworn in because the constitution of Ghana does not provide for a vacuum. Mm. There cannot be a period where there is no presidency. There's always a president. Because the interesting thing for us to appreciate is that in the absence of the president, it's the vice president who acts as president. But in this particular instance, the president is being elected with the vice president. Their fortunes are tied exactly. together. Exactly. And then, in the absence of the vice president, it's the speaker who acts. But the speaker's term comes to an end also. Because the new parliament will now have to come and elect mm -hmm. a new speaker. So mm -hmm. you can see the correlation between all these positions. That, that's the more reason why I say that. The constitution abhors a vacuum. And so there has to be an inauguration of the president. But the election of the president can still be declared mm. null and void after the declaration. Earlier when we started the discussion, you, you spoke about uh, this case being a test yes. of our legal system and our democracy, many will agree. Yeah. Now, what I need to find out from you is that there have been, there have been arguments that, look, I mean, the MPP won minority uh, in Parliament, and it's in the minority. So if a court decision rules in favor of the citizen, Nana Adodankwe Kufuado, uh, let's say, overturns the results of the, the, the election in his favor. It will mean that a government will be formed with a minority in parliament. Is this something that you anticipate will be healthy for our democratic uh, adventure? Yeah, well, of course it is healthy. Why, what, you know, the problem of us is that sometimes we use some sort of mathematical formula to confuse certain things which are possible. Right now, the, uh, you can see what was happening in the U.S. presidency, mm. that the House is controlled by the, the Republicans, Republicans. Mm. and not by the Democrats. And here we have a Democratic president. He was only lucky that the Senate has a Democratic majority. But we have instances where both the Senate and the House were majority when the president did not have that kind of power. All it means is that the president has to learn to be accommodating. That also, I believe, is very healthy because I have been looking at this political scene for many years now, and I realize that we have confused the, uh, the executive and the legislature as being two in, uh, one, one institution. But that is not what it is meant to be. They are meant to be two separate institutions. When they cock, they cock talk, talk you, but are they, they supposed to be independent of yes, each other? Well, exactly. That is what the whole issue is. They're supposed to be what we call checks and balances. This is what the whole system is meant to be. The system is meant to be checks and balances, not one controlling the other. What we are doing is that we have turned it upside down. It's like the president. His party is there, and therefore he can do everything he likes because the party will cut his way. But that is not the intention, original intention. Do you the think that we'll ever get there we where must, Parliament will become an objective we, check on, we, on the We executive. must get there. The day we will stop having our MPs being made ministers of state, then they will begin to appreciate where their power is, and they will exert that power. I am praying that that day will come before I die. And what do we need? in order to make sure you need this a, happens. You need to have a change whereby the president goes to appoint most of his ministers from parliament. Now, let's, let's go to the issue of parliament. You, as we, we've, we've brought the discussion down to parliament, the fifth parliament will, will, will dissolve, and yeah. then the sixth one will come into force. But right. now, the catch here is that there is a Transitions Act, which uh, recommends, I don't know whether the, 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 the provisions of the Transitions Act is binding. I don't know that. I don't understand the legal it issues is, is there. Binding. But the 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 Transitions Act yeah. recommends that the new Parliament yeah. should should come into force two days yeah. after the old one 
is, is dissolved. Is dissolved. Yes. But that is in contradiction to what the Constitution says. This no. no, no, no. You see, the issue that we must bear in mind is that the president, there's, there has to be a speaker. The president has to be sworn in. You need to have a parliament before the president is sworn in. Yeah. So the, the process of what they are doing was just to ensure that the transition makes one goes, another one comes into being, mm. and therefore there will be a continuity. Because when you don't have that, then you are creating a vacuum. And we cannot have a vacuum. But, but the Constitution um, says, I, I, don't, I think I should go back. The yeah. Constitution provides yeah. that the, the Constitution provides that Parliament, the, the, the old one, yeah. okay. I look through composition, but let me try and summarize mm -hmm. going through my, my waste our time. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the Transitions Act yeah. recommends that the new parliament should be t sworn in two days, yes. uh, at least two days yeah. after the old one has dissolved. Yeah. But the, the Constitution doesn't put two days within, to it. Within two days. So the, you don't think there's a conflict there? No, I think no. there's a it, conflict. It is talking about within two days. That means if you dissolve it within that period, there must be another parliament in place. Because when you don't have that parliament in place, who is the president going to swear his oath before? There will be no parliament. And we, we've had situations before where you know, there was a whole confusion as we, uh, there was a challenge to the uh, speaker, speakership of parliament. Mm -hmm. And that confusion, if we were not careful, would have run into a situation whereby you can find out that you don't have a speaker and there is no president cannot be sworn in, mm. or he's being sworn in without parliament, because he has to be sworn in before the parliament. So I think this was the, what the transitional provision is actually trying to take care of some of the things that we hadn't thought about before. Mm. And now they are trying to cover them up by this provision that we made in transitional provision. So it is actually not in contravention of the constitution. I know since you're here, we haven't had a lot of time to mm. have a chat with you all through the the period of mm. campaigning yeah. to the period of elections mm. and to this point so I'll take advantage of that whilst mm. you're here mm. tell me what do you make of the last elections do mm. you think it was that uh, smooth and even free to the point that the MPP really does not have a case to to question the, the credibility of the results well you see sometimes in Ghana you depend on who you are talking to because in many instances, we love to take entrenched positions and virtually become blind to the occurrences. Mm. I mean, I have had oppo opportunities to monitor elections. Mm. In fact, I monitor elections in, as far back as 1980 in Zimbabwe. Mm. And I have monitored elections here, and I've gone around, and I've seen the more practices that happen all the time. And sometimes we keep a blind eye. When people say, they say, oh, it's because he's Lord, that's why he's making the allegation. But the more practices, they continue all the time. And indeed, you will see that we insisted on voter IDs, and then now we insisted on, uh, what do we call it? The biometric. Bi biometric mm. verification. Why were they all this necessary? Why did we ask for them if there was, everything was smooth and there was no problem? It's because we knew that problems were arisen, where people had gone to vote for election who are not on the register, and so they connivance with electoral officers. I have seen situations whereby I was at the police station and I saw somebody who was going around voting. She goes around and vote, she goes around and vote. And when I asked the electoral officer whether what that person, what was doing was right, you know what the lady who was doing the voting said, this is the last one. Really? In my presence, not a care, care. Mm -hmm. in my presence. We've seen situations whereby the electoral officer at the close of the day took a whole book, booklet, applied his own thumbprint at the back of it, cut the whole book, and was putting it inside the box, and somebody held his hand. So we've seen all these small practices. They happen all the time. The previous election, the, the one but one's election, Dr. Henry was beaten at the police station in the uh, uh, Vapu area when he challenged what the, the Mopad they were doing. They beat him mercilessly. In fact, it's God's grace that he's still alive today. So we've seen all these things happen. So if someone is complaining that there have been a malpractice at the election, I think we ought to be careful the way we take it. You know, in Egypt, 
the relation that was just heard. They had a process whereby petitions are presented to the Electoral Commission, and the Electoral Commission does not announce the result until it has gone through the petitions. We should have a similar thing here? Yes. In fact, if, if we were doing that, it would have been a healthy idea, because otherwise the Electoral Commission is behaving as if nothing is going wrong. But I'm saying that you, the Electoral Commissioners, you are not at the polling stations. Those you are appointing to be electoral officers. So you think Afarijan should wake up and smell the coffee hey, because hey, a lot of things go on. That that is one blind side. In fact, that was one of the reasons why I'm saying that this matter is good that if there is sufficient evidence mm. for it to be tested, even if the case is not won, I think it is good and healthy again for the process for the electoral commission to appreciate that it is not a flawless institution that there is a lot of individuals that they have employed who are themselves corrupt, and that there are a lot of things that goes wrong in the electoral process, which does not show eventually that this is the will of the people. So you would disagree with anyone who would suggest that the MPP should let sleeping dogs lie. You've lost. Accept or, the loss. Or let, Move on. Or let they can prove to me that they are older than me and that they have been more involved in this process more than I have. I can tell you that at least I've been involved in this thing over 40 years now. And I have seen it election after election. And so it is not something anyone can come and tell me that it is not true. I'm telling you that it does happen. I said I've done, I've seen what it, even mm. outside this country, mm. that it does happen. I mean, in your, in your capacity, in your status as renowned Sam Okujeto, were you consulted by NDC or MPP in any of these legal wrangles no, you could no, share with no, us? Nobody. None of them has consulted me. If so if they consulted you, let's start with NDC. If NDC consulted you at the point of um, filing that petition to attach itself mm -hmm. to the MPP, you know, to, to, to John Mahama being named as respondent, uh, what would you say? What advice would you give? Well, personally, I would have said that well, they should rather use an individual rather than the party. I think it's safer. And in fact, it's even a good face-saving process because assuming that they go and they lose, that's not good for them. You know, sometimes we should look at it in the bigger picture. I would rather that they even get an individual who will go mm. to court and say, I'm a member of the MP NDC and uh, I voted for uh, John Damani Mahama at the last election and therefore I have an interest in the outcome of this uh, process. And so I want to join in. It's just a question of getting another lawyer to put in an, an, an aspect of the argument. That's what that this matter is involved. So you say it's ill-advised, right? Well, I'm not here to condemn anybody, but I'm mm. just saying that if I were asked, this is what advice I would have given to them, that it is not in their interest to put the political party, rather. But you won't, pin, you won't pinpoint to say it was a wrong advice. Yeah, because, they, you know, because the likelihood to say is that then you, 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 the people might say that you were a party to mm. the fraud that they are alleging. Mm. You, you get the picture. And yeah. I don't think that's good image builder for the political party. So you foresee that this application will fail at the Supreme Court? Uh, which one? The application to attach the party to John Muhammad's response. No, 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 I cannot to... even swear to that categorically. All I'm saying is that here it tells me that validity of the election might be by, by petition by A, sit, only, only by a citizen of Ghana. That's what it says. Mm. And it, uh, the process also indicates that whatever interested party is concerned about. Electoral Commission Court is an institution. Mm. But that is the institution charged by law to do what? To conduct the election. And therefore, you cannot file a petition challenging their behavior and conduct without what? Serving them with a copy of the petition. Mm. What about them to be presented? What about the MPP? If they had consulted you before filing this petition, would you have advised them any different? You know, perhaps uh, say something to make their case stronger or better? Well, no, no. I mean, I would, uh, uh, if they had consulted me, I would have advised them as they have done to mm. say that bring the petition in the name of uh, in individuals. Uh, perhaps I might not even say that let Danado himself go to the court. I would have just said that let any, any uh, uh, the person who said that he voted for you go to the court. But I think the fact that he's put his own name there, I think it's good also, part of the, part of the, mm. the healthiness of what we are all trying, trying to do. But otherwise, I think the, um, the important thing, of course, is that to make sure that you have your facts, because these are factual matters.
that you might be able to stab it before the court. And if you go and you are able to establish it, then it becomes a disgrace on you. Mm. So the important thing is to ensure that you have proper documentation on the issues which are being alleged. Uh, particularly when there are, you know, sometimes you see that at the police station, I've seen situations where uh, they, you, you bribe your opponent's uh, electoral officers, give them a little money, sometimes to go and buy kenke because they are tired and, and hungry. And, and the time they come back, Things have happened. The, the things already have happened. Did, did this happen in 2012? No, I, I, have, I have no idea. I mm. have no idea. You, you've been that. around for a long time. Yes. You've been around in the NDC uh, governance mm. under Rawlings and then Kufo and then Mills, Mahama. I've been since Bush, yes. You have? Yes. You, you're a fine man. You can be a Speaker of Parliament. Have you ever been, um, you know, I approached? I've never lobbied in my life for any position. Why haven't you? No, it's just not part of my makeup. You didn't want uh, frontline uh, political roles? No, I'm just saying that I, what, if I am asked to do something and I think I'm competent, I would do it. So but if I'm President John that, Mahama um, places a phone call to you, perhaps after our show tonight, that he wants to consider you for Speaker of Parliament, what will be your response? I can assure you that I know of many, many people in the NDC who will go and hang him in the, his, the castle. They'll kick against oh, the idea. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Do you have enemies in the NDC for, for which you think this is not a possibility there at all? Are, you know, in the politics of this society of our world, people are strange the way they think. Uh, I remember one person saying at one time, I say, I only want to work with people with my ideology. I was taken aback. In fact, I was so shocked because I believe that in a society like ours, what we should be concerned about is competence. That if the person is competent, so far as I'm concerned, whatever political party he belongs to is neither here nor there. Because what we require in the society of ours at the moment is to ensure that we get the right people to do the right work. And I've always maintained that if I were to be president of Ghana, I will look around the country and find competent people, whether they belong to my party, they don't belong to my party, I will give them responsibility. Why didn't you ever want to be president? You could have been a fine president. Well, thank I you would have you. voted for you. Thank you for the compliment. <laughs> Why didn't you ever want to? No, I have never aspired for that. You never aspired for political office? No, I can't say that because after all, if uh, I tell you that... Uh, Perhaps before you were born, I was already a member of parliament in 69. Would you believe that? I will, be, I will, be, I will believe that. So, so quickly, I mean, let's, let's wrap up on, on this. I mean, I know that there are, there are, there are hundreds mm -hmm. and perhaps millions of Ghanaian voters who um, are less educated. Majority of our population is less educated now and their understanding of issues as we go into an election for example is constrained but if you look at the results which came out would you say that this is something we should be we should still be holding ourselves to that majority of the people who vote and elect leaders don't understand the issues oh that one is true that one is very true uh in fact it is not only among the illiterates i'm sorry to say because I have spoken to educated people sometimes who I'm so, so shocked. Who have no clue. They have no clue what the whole issue is about. And sometimes the same ones after the election will be complaining. And then you ask them, but, but you were following the group. Where were you following them? For what purpose were you voting for them? Do you understand what the issues are? You know, because we have not come... And of course, let me also make a correction and just to say that this is not peculiar to Ghana mm. that even in the so-called very advanced country you find the same kind of mentality among people who will take entrenched position and they will vote for their party irrespective of whether they are doing the right thing or the wrong thing so it's a balance issue mm. we just have to continue but I think the we need to get the people more enlightened. And that's a responsibility. In fact, we've set up institutions to do that. We are not doing it. The uh, NC... National Commission on Civil Education. NCCE. NCCE, mm. fortunately, is not fulfilling that role. 
that particular role because again we politicize it because the concept of saying that the president appoints people to those positions is wrong mm. i believe that it is time we begin to appreciate that there are a lot of national institutions whereby there should be bipartisan in the selecting of the people who should govern because if we have that that institution would have been going around the country to educate the people on what their rights are what their their, their their the how they can demand that the right thing be done you go to many areas where there's no road people are still drinking muddy water and yet they will say that they're entrained this is the party they support and yet the party they are supporting is not providing them with the thing and yet they are still voting for them so you ask yourself why are they voting do they really understand why they're exactly. voting? Exactly. And sometimes you may find out that they are part, another party will come, provide them with the road, provide them with the water, and then they vote against that party. They vote rather for another party. So this is, unfortunately, part of the tragedy of what we have in the country. But I think people need to appreciate when there is an election, ask themselves, what are the issues? The person I'm voting for to be a member of parliament, what is, is he going to represent me or his own interests? Because you see, many of them were driving four by four, and then they occasionally visit the constituency. Otherwise, the people who had voted for them are still there struggling and suffering, and nobody does anything about it. So we need to enlighten our people to appreciate that the vote is power. Indeed, I maintain that the, um, the janitor at the castle has one vote. The president has won. The first. president won. The man, the soldier at the gate, when he heard the sorry, he jumps for attention and opens the gate for him to go. He has one vote. And the president has what? One vote. The person who makes tea for the president has one vote. And the president has one vote. And I kept maintaining that the day that those individuals be, will appreciate that they have power, and that power is in the vote. And that indeed that vote is so powerful that it has it serves a dual purpose. Because when you cast it into the box, you can overthrow a president and then replace him with another one. You can re overthrow your MP and replace it with another one. It's a lot of power. But I believe I can tell you that maybe eighty to ninety percent of Ghanaians don't appreciate that they have that power. And so they are sit down mm -hmm. and they are being manipulated. Mr. Kujato, before I let you go, one last thing. The MPP is boycotting the inauguration. Is this a big deal? Uh, well, no, the, the boycott, it will still be, it will still be held. I, uh, it will have no, it has no legal, it has, it has no, it has no legal effect. It has no, it has no legal effect. Basically, they are wasting their energies. Well, maybe they just want to make a point to say that uh, people might say that they had uh, where you but, you but you were there, you agree for the man to be sworn in. Mm. So why are you now say so you're boycotting? It's a Ghanaian mentality, <laughs> you know. If it's, if not because of the Ghanaian mentality, I would have said that. Please just go and uh, have him sworn in, and then mm. you can go back to and kick him out. <laughs> <laughs> so so in your lifetime, I mean, I prayed several more years for you. But in your lifetime, mm. what would you wish to see in the Ghana you love when it comes to our democratic development? I think what I would like is that the people should not take too much partisan approach to you know, important national issues. You talk about national development, and you find out that one party comes in and he points and a member of the National Development Council. So I said, why? You are only there for four years. But this is a kind of program where we should have projections for 50 years or more. You go to country, you find out that there's a five-year development plan, there's a 10-year development plan, there's a 20-year development plan, there's a 50-year development plan. You are using that to judge the party which is in office, to see what it has done about the plan that is supposed to be done within the period that they were there. Not the manifesto. I can tell you the manifesto is a useless document. It's a useless document. People make so much back, 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 then when they go and you are asking them, they don't undertake it. So if this can be done, in a bipartisan way. Indeed, I would say that if there should be political representation, that should be in a minority. The majority should be citizens with know-how, experience. They should sit down and ask ourselves. I'm telling about education, for example. We know the population grows in the country. Do we not? We do. And therefore, 
We should have had a program which appreciates that the population is increasing by, let's say, 3% a year. And therefore, there should be plans to build what? Classrooms, provide textbooks, make sure we have enough teachers who are training the teacher training colleges to man the schools. In anticipation, in anticipation of, this of that right. growth. Mm. To appreciate that math and science are now becoming the epitome for national development. And therefore, there should be an accelerated program to do what? To train math teachers and science teachers. I'm chairman of the Pretoria University College. I can tell you that if you see the number of people who are being trained, who come there to take maths, you weep. Hmm. You will weep. And yet these are the ones who should go and man what? Our secondary schools. So people think that maths is difficult because the teachers are not there. And so you're asking me, this is part of what I keep praying, yeah. that people, we as a nation, no parties, we as a nation should begin to appreciate that India and the rest have developed to the where they have gone to. And many of them have copied from Germany through to Japan, back to South Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, all the countries around there have appreciated this situation. And you can see the emphasis on what? Science and maths. That's why all the technological things are going there. They're manufacturing for them. What are we doing here? We are joking. Well, Samuel Kujetua mm -hmm. Black, I'm grateful for your time. My well, name you is Stephen <laughs> Samuel Kujetua, I beg your pardon. I apologize. Uh, we keep confusing you <laughs> with your nephew. nephew. Uh, it's been great mm -hmm. having you here on PM Express. Mm -hmm. Join us again mm -hmm. for another edition mm -hmm. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Good night. Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm.